if you're watching this after the fact uh, in clip format and you're new to the channel, uh, thank you so much for checking it out. Reminder, we do these uh, roundtable discussions every Sunday from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. Eastern uh, throughout the off season. We only do one a month, but once the ball season starts back up, it will be every single Sunday. So let us know if you're enjoying this and uh, let's continue with the talk then. Now we're going to talk mm-hmm. Carlos Correa. And mm. the saga that's going on there. So you're joining us at a great time. Fun. Um, what is going on here with Carlos Correa? Uh, Jim, we'll start with you. Uh, appreciate you joining the show. But before we do, I just want to I want to put this little idea out here for everybody to just kind of digest on. If Carlos Correa doesn't end up a New York Met, if he doesn't go back to the Giants, which I don't think he would. If he doesn't go to the Twins again. <laughs> Look, there's a long list of teams with fan bases that have Correa jerseys that they're setting on fire on Christmas Eve. <laughs> My point is, would it be such a crazy idea for the Blue Jays to go in short term on a Carlos Correa? Let's think like a three-year high AAV Carlos Correa contract. 120-ish million dollars. What's a few million bucks between friends? He's now our shortstop. Bo moves to second. You guys can see the picture from there. Is that is that the craziest thing I've ever come up with, or is there a little bit of meat on those bones? That, Jim? that was that was going to be one of my potential topics. I always prepare like five, <laughs> um, and that was that was one of them. I I was specifically going to ask, you know, is there a con con contract structure where you would ignore the medicals and put Carlos at, at shortstop, knowing full well that that also means moving Bo. Great question. So Jim, let's start with you then. I mean, if we, if we get to a point where he'll take a short-term contract, then yeah, I think he opens up. I mean, that opens up the door for a lot of teams because I mean, Minnesota last year did not do, you know, this didn't, this was not a red flag with Minnesota's deal last year, but it was so short term that you're not worried about, you know, insurance and, and the back end of a guy's career. So if it gets to a point where this Mets deal falls apart because the Mets won't go long-term, if the twins won't go long-term and all he can get is a one or two or three year deal with some opt-outs, then it makes sense for Toronto to get in on that. It, it also makes sense for half the league to get in on that. Yeah. I think. Great point. Uh, Jim, you actually brought up a, a good point. I don't know if this was on your podcast or on Twitter. Scott sent it to me, though, that you were making about the insurance and that that might be oh, yeah. a reason for the hang up. So do you want to explain what your your theory was there? Because I really like it, but you can explain it a lot better than I can. Yeah, the insurance situation is such that and this is why, I mean, the, the Giants had issue, the, the Mets have issue and anybody's going to have issue. Really, the insurance thing is is more bad news for Carlos Correa. Because if, if an insurance company now, so a quick history on insurance in Major League Baseball, it is not mandated that a contract is insured. Uh, it is up to the team's discretion. Sometimes they will, they will not. Depends on the the, the, the threshold of, of risk that that team is willing to take on. So you have it really, the team decides if they want to want to insure a contract. And $300 million dollars. 10 plus years. Yeah. The Mets and the Giants. Want to insure want to that, of course. Yes. And the problem is an insurance company. Uh, I've been reading up on this. There's, there's only a few articles out there. There's not a ton because this really isn't talked about unless it becomes a big story. And the last, the last relevant uh, article that was out there was from the Washington post back in 2016. And it was related to the Nats and Steven Strasburg. And it really explained everything about insurance and how it works. So a third-party insurer will ask for an exemption based on previous injury history. And this plate in his foot, his ankle, uh, I have to think that an insurance company is saying, we're not going to touch that. They may also not be interested in insuring his back. So uh, an insurance policy that would basically be useless. So now, in a normal situation, if you have the insurance policy, and this is where I think they're probably hung up, you have an insurance policy on a, on, a, on a contract on a player, and the player spends X amount of days on the IL, you can recoup some of that money. And if the career is shortened, you can recoup some of the money. How much money depends on how big of a policy you take out on him. And 
the insurance company reimburses the team. But in this situation, the Mets are trying to get Carlos Correa to reimburse the team. I don't think he or Scott Boris is interested in that at all. But if an insurance company cannot, so so it gets back to the fact where it's not really on the Giants, it's not on the Mets, it's it's not that they can't get the deal done, it's that they can't get it insured. And I think that that's I think that's the issue here, and that well, will happen with anybody that's trying to give him a long term deal, which is what he wants. I talked to a buddy of mine who was yeah. uh, in insurance, and, and basically, like they look at it from a risk assessment. They'll they'll insure any player, but mm-hmm. the premium go keeps going up, and yeah. with a contract of three hundred plus million dollars on a guy that you know they're going to look at everything. And they're going to say, okay, New York Mets, this is how much it costs for the policy. Mm-hmm. So the Mets are going to Correa saying like, hey, we can't pay you. Like you want 340, but we can only give you like 300 because the insurance policy is going to cost that much to do right. it. Right. It, it might cost them $100 million to insure it. And there's not, they're yeah, not going to so, throw $100 so million dollars the on top they, of that. They, they are, they're trying to take money off the contract for Correa to help subsidize their insurance policy. And like I, and Boris is just like, well, no, like this is what we want per season. Period. You know, it's up to you to insure it. That's that's a you problem, not a mm-hmm. Carlos Correa problem. One of the problem. But now it's becoming a Carlos Correa problem well, too. It, it is yeah. a Carlos Correa problem. <laughs> one but one other think, interesting. Go sorry, go ahead, go ahead, Garth. Oh, the the one thing okay. I wanted to say about the whole thing is, if if Correa feels good about his health, like. Do you, do you guys remember like when LeBron left uh, Cleveland the first time I went to Miami? The decision, yeah. Yeah, okay. Every season for about the next like eight years, like he had long-term deals, but that was a long-term deal in name only. He had an opt-out after every year, and he renegotiated his contract every year, and he mm-hmm. made way more money because of it. Because yeah. Because there, le- there was less risk for the team. And he was getting way more on his annual average. He, like, because the cap kept going up and he just kept making more money every year. So, like, I don't know, like, would Correa even consider, like, hey, I think I'm, I'm going to be healthy for 10 years and I'm just going to sign one year contracts and make 40 or 50 million every year? Like, I, I don't know. I, I think it's getting to the point where if no insurance company is going to touch that contract, yeah. He needs to reevaluate him and Boris need to reevaluate how to maximize his earning power over the next decade. Creative solutions. I, mean, I, I, I like it. I just, I Scott, before, before you yet. jump in, Sorry. Scott, I just want to add one, one other wrinkle that might uh, be a factor of contention for the New York Mets. Uh, I looked into this a little bit with the Ryu insurance uh, with his lost season and how that affects the Blue Jays. And so that's where I first uh, kind of read about this. Correct me if I'm wrong, but the reimbursement from the insurance, sure, that does go to the owners and their bottom line, but it does not reduce their number when it comes to the luxury tax. Nope, it does not. So for a team like the New York Mets, Mm -hmm. for even if they were able to get that thing 100% insured, if they have to pay officially, formally on the books, as far as the luxury Mm -hmm. tax goes, 30 million plus to Carlos Correa for the next 10 years. Even if they get all that money back, that's from a business standpoint and their ability to operate a competitive team. That is a pretty big anchor to be carrying mm-hmm. around their neck. Well, and, they, and they still have to pay the insurance policy, yeah. which could be yeah. like, you know, it could be 10 million a season. So yeah, the, the typical insurance policy for a position player is about 3% of the overall deal. And they will do insurance, uh, you know, uh, terms in, in, in terms of usually two or three year uh, time periods. They won't. So th- the whole 12 years is not insured under one policy. They would have to continue renewing the policy, renegotiating the policy, which is another whole uh, wrinkle to this point. And another element to this, if they are able to secure insurance and let's say Carlos Correa, Carlos Correa, uh, this, this, this plate, in his foot uh, it causes him to retire early. And let's say he can't play out the last two or three years of the contract, depending on how they work out the insurance, he may have to also remain on the 40 man roster, which could cause problems Whoa. when they're trying to figure out the whole roster that happened with Albert bell and the Orioles 
back in the day when Albert Bell had to retire early. I <laughs> did not know that, Jim. Thanks for bringing that up, man. Shit. That is yeah. uh, an, another little well, wrinkle. I mean, I mean a, player, <laughs> a player could do like a player could retire and get mm-hmm. some kind of a, a buyout or whatever, but Albert Bell, you know, he wasn't like, you know, pro team. He was like, I want my money. So yeah, yeah. he sure was. 